In this video, we're going to take a close look at film emulation color grading systems, specifically the Dehancer film emulation plugin for DaVinci Resolve. The team at Dehancer reached out to me to review their plugin, and I wanted to approach this in a way that would be genuinely helpful and offer a fresh perspective for you. You can already find many videos online that walk through every single feature of Dehancer, and that information is also readily available on their website as well as simply showing you how I use the Hansen to color grade a few clips might not be that helpful as my chosen settings most likely wouldn't work for your project because lighting and scene elements vary so much from project to project. Plus their website already showcases great examples of the Hansen's film emulation quality even when used in professional commercial works. Instead, I decided to focus on something that's often overlooked, the workflow itself, how you actually interact with these color grading systems. We spend a lot of time trying to achieve the much sought after film look and choosing the right kind of color grading system for your way of working is really important. It empowers you and gives you confidence not only to achieve your desired look, but to do so efficiently. So this isn't about saying one system is better than the other. It's about helping you understand what it's like to use these different types of color grading systems and ultimately determine which workflow style works best for you and your projects. I also want to be upfront and clear that whilst I'm partnering with Dehancer to bring you this review, everything I'm sharing is completely my own honest opinion. From the beginning, Dehancer made it clear that they want an honest review to help improve their plugin, and I really respect that and appreciate their commitment to improvement. All right, let's get into it. So for most of my past color grading work, I've used node-based color grading systems within DaVinci Resolve. When I say node-based system, I'm talking about a type of color grading template, also known as a power grade. These are built using many interconnected nodes within DaVinci Resolve. Each node in the expanded node tree performs a specific job, such as fine-tuning color or adding grain, and collectively they create the final film look. The main node-based systems that I've used in the past are Film Unlimited by Juan Malara and Cineprint by Tom Bowles. Both are excellent, well-thought-out tools that allow you to see and control every step of the color grading process. Dehancer, being a plugin-based color grading system, works differently from these node-based systems. It operates inside of just a single node in DaVinci Resolve and you modify its settings within its own effects panel. This key difference of node-based versus plugin-based leads to some important distinctions in how you work and what features are available. Node-based systems, because they are built directly inside of DaVinci Resolve, are inherently tied to DaVinci Resolve's native tools and limitations. Plugin systems like Dehancer, however, have more flexibility to offer a suite-like feature set and a way of working that extends beyond just Resolve's node structure capabilities. I'll be structuring this review in three parts. Benefits of Dehancer compared to node-based systems, limitations of Dehancer compared to these node-based systems, and some personal suggestions to improve Dehancer as well. Let's start with the benefits. Dehancer is designed to be a complete all-in-one plugin for film emulation. It has a user-friendly design with an intuitive slider-based interface that feels instantly familiar, especially if you've used any popular photo editing software before. A big advantage of Dehancer is its large collection of custom camera profiles. These aren't just general brand profiles, but rather custom made for specific camera models, not just entire brands. This is important because it gives you confidence that you're using a profile design to work best with Dehancer for your exact camera. Node-based color grading systems often offer profiles for camera brands, but rarely for specific camera models. And even then, it's often at an additional cost, whereas the Hanser includes these camera-specific profiles as standard. And what's more, the Hanser's camera profile library isn't static. They are constantly updating their specific camera model profiles as new cameras are released. This is a real advantage for post-production houses that work with footage from a wide variety of cameras. Or even if you're just planning to upgrade your camera in the future, the Hansa stays current and keeps up to date with changing camera technology. Because the Hansa works in a single self-contained node, it can hide the technical complexity of various color space transform nodes underneath. This makes it easier for people who may be new to color grading their log footage to feel confident that they're correctly transforming their footage to the proper output for general viewing on a monitor or a phone, also known as Rec. 709. The Hansa's tool layout is fixed, which helps with efficiency. Unlike node-based systems where you can move nodes around and get disorganized, the Hansa's tools are always in the same place and easy to find. This consistent layout helps you build muscle memory, so you can quickly find and use the tools you need without having to search for them or remember how to modify them each time. 
the Hansa lets you quickly preview different film stocks just by scrolling your mouse wheel. This is a useful feature for exploring creative options and rapidly trying out many different film stocks. It's much faster to find the best film stock for your footage compared to switching power grades for different film stocks in a node-based system, especially when you want to retain some shot-specific changes but only modify the film stock itself. Plus, node-based systems generally tend to have a more limited range of film stocks to choose from. The Hansa stands out with its high quality and customizable film effects. Their effect tools are very detailed, offer a lot of control and are easy to tweak. Modifying film effects with this level of detail in a node-based system is usually much more complicated and requires carefully navigating and adjusting settings across multiple nodes. The Hansa puts these complex effects into easy to use, dedicated tools, making it much simpler to add authentic and dynamic animated film effects to your video. The Hansa works very well with the Shift Plus F view available in the color section of DaVinci Resolve. This allows you to use the plugin in a clean photo editor style layout. When you press Shift Plus F on your keyboard, it hides all the extra DaVinci Resolve panels, leaving just your video image and the Dehanza plugin controls visible. This creates a workspace that feels very similar to photo editing programs like Lightroom or Capture One, which many users find comfortable and familiar. This can make color grading and resolve feel much less complicated, especially if you're coming from a photo editing background. Dehanza isn't only designed to work within DaVinci Resolve, but across many different platforms with broad compatibility across video and photo editing programs. This is a significant advantage as you can seamlessly transfer your learned Dehanza skills to be able to work in other programs. And in professional settings where different teams or companies might use different software, Dehanza's cross-platform nature allows you to jump in and color grade in new software with less of a learning curve. Tahansa also has a separate subscription-based iOS app, which allows you to use the same Tahansa workflow on the go for photo and video color grading. And because Tahansa creates their own camera model specific profiles for video color grading, they are able to bring these to the iOS app. This cross-platform profile use is a real benefit as it lets you keep your colors consistent. And as the workflow felt very familiar and the tools responded in a similar way as the DaVinci Resolve plugin, it was very easy to seamlessly transfer this knowledge to grading on the mobile platform. Node-based color grading systems don't generally offer any compatibility with mobile. Though for me personally, I have an older iPad, so I couldn't test the Dehancer app directly on it as it wasn't compatible. However, I did test it on my family's modern Mac mini, which can run iPad apps, and it worked very well. It'd be the exact same interface that you're seeing here, but just on a modern iPhone or iPad. Dehance is also supported by a large dedicated team who are able to handle creating new camera profiles, updating, optimizing the plugin for its different platforms, adding features and offering support for its large user base. While smaller teams behind no base film emulation tools do excellent work, you generally won't see this frequency of updates from them. Now, I'd like to look at some of the limitations of Dehanza when comparing it to a node-based color grading system. One key difference is the lack of transparency in Dehanza's film stocks. You're unable to see exactly how the film look is created within the plugin. With node-based systems, you can see all the individual nodes, curves, and adjustments that make up the final look. You can then transparently edit each part of the emulation, tweaking individual curves and settings to your liking. For users working on a complicated scene with unfavorable lighting that may require significant color shifts, the inability to directly access the components that make up the film stock can feel a bit limiting. This granular control in a node-based workflow also allows you to combine elements you like from different film stocks. For example, you could just take the saturation node from a Kodak 250D film stock and use it inside of a Kodak 500T film emulation. This kind of detailed mixing of film characteristics isn't possible within Dehance's self-contained plugin. You are limited to using each film stock as a whole without being able to break it down and combine parts from different ones. In my testing, I did notice that some Dehance film stocks can introduce a fairly strong color warp, particularly on certain colors. This means that specific hues in your footage might be shifted more dramatically than others by the film stock. With a node-based system, you have the flexibility to go in and tweak the individual nodes to counteract any unwanted color shifts. In Dehancer, if you encounter this, you might need to add external nodes before Dehancer to perform hue adjustments or potentially choose a different film stock altogether for that scene. Whilst potentially workable, it may require extra steps outside of the plugin itself. 
In addition to this, the Hansa doesn't have opacity controls for each individual tool within the plugin. You can adjust the overall strength of the plugin in the output panel, but you can't, for example, reduce the intensity of the film stock without disabling it altogether. This is different from node-based systems where you can often adjust the opacity of each individual node, giving you very precise control over each part of the look. This lack of individual opacity controls in Dehancer is especially noticeable when you are using Dehancer's built-in camera profiles to convert log footage to output for general viewing on a monitor or a phone, also known as Rec. 709. In these cases, you often don't want to adjust the overall opacity of the plugin because you might lose the specific color and contrast transformations that are part of the camera profile. In creating additional Dehancer nodes with just the film stock enabled for the sole purpose of using DaVinci Resolve's key output tool is not only cumbersome, but also taxing on your computer. As you can see, each color grading system has its own strengths and weaknesses. Now let's move on to talking about some potential improvements for Dehancer. These are my personal suggestions that I think could really build on Dehancer's strengths and make it an even more powerful and user-friendly tool. Dehancer's slider-based layout tool with labels is excellent for ease of use. However, the labels themselves could be even more helpful with clearer, more detailed descriptions. Sometimes it's not immediately obvious what a specific tool does or how it affects the image, and you might need to check the online manual to really understand it. And apart from improving the descriptions of each label, I have an idea that whilst I'm not sure if it's technically possible within DaVinci Resolve, would be helpful. Mousing over a tool could trigger a small GIF animation with a tooltip description visually demonstrating its effect. Think of Photoshop's tooltips. Something similar in the Hansa would go a long way in further helping users to understand how each tool works. The vignette tool currently lacks a visual overlay to show you where it's affecting the image and its feather region. Right now, the only way to clearly see the vignette's edges is to either use a limited mask mode or reduce the feather all the way down to see the hard outline and then adjust from there. This is a bit cumbersome, and if possible, implementing a visual overlay system similar to DaVinci Resolve's native power window overlays would help a lot. Dehancer includes several different tools that adjust exposure and contrast in various ways. However, it can be quite confusing to understand which tool you should use in different situations, at what point in the film emulation workflow you should be using it, and why one might be better than the other. For example, looking at the Dehancer interface, it's not immediately clear when to use the Exposure Comp tool in the Input panel versus the Exposure EV tool in the Print panel, or the Contrast Boost tool in the Film Developer panel versus the Tonal Contrast tool in the Print panel. Providing clearer descriptions within the plugin itself for each of these tools would really help users to understand the intended purpose for each tool. This helps users feel confident that they are making informed grading decisions rather than purely experimental ones. When you first load the Dehancer plugin, it adds a strong teal color cast to your image. Whilst it's helpful to have some sort of visual change to know that the plugin has loaded and is working, this strong initial teal color cast can be quite jarring. It can interrupt your creative vision because it changes the image quite significantly right from the start. In my opinion, a less intense initial effect would help users to maintain their creative vision when they're initially testing their footage with Dehancer. Furthermore, Dehancer has a very useful Disable All Tools button that lets users turn off all default film stocks and effects to start color grading with a clean slate, which is a preferred starting point for many users. However, this button is currently located at the very bottom of the plugin interface, making it less easily discoverable. Moving this Disable All Tools button to the top of the plugin interface would make it much more accessible for users who prefer to build their grades from scratch, adding effects one by one, carefully observing their impact on the image. The Dehancer manual suggests a specific workflow sequence where the Expand tool is typically adjusted relatively early, right after selecting the camera profile and film stock. If this is the recommended workflow order, then reordering the panels in the plugin to place Expand as the third panel immediately following camera profile and film would guide users through the intended workflow more naturally and align the plugin structure with Dehancer's own recommended grading process. The Dehancer website already has excellent examples showing the different film stocks in the plugin and how they look in various settings and finalized works. It would be helpful to include a small preview window of these same examples directly within the plugin when users are selecting different film stocks. 
Seeing these visual examples directly in the plugin would be a great source of inspiration and help users quickly understand the unique characteristics of each film stock. It would help users to get a better sense of which films might be more suitable for different lighting conditions or creative styles, making the film stock selection process more informed. Also, whilst the Films and Profiles section of the Dehancer website is full of valuable information, it could be redesigned to be more user-friendly as a quick reference that you keep side-by-side -side on your screen whilst you are color grading. Currently, each film and print stock has its own separate page, which makes it a bit slow and inefficient to compare the different options. When trying to use the website as a reference, you end up clicking back and forth between pages or opening up many tabs. Implementing a drop-down menu or scrollable interface on the website that lets users quickly browse through film information and examples just by scrolling with their mouse wheel would significantly improve its usefulness as a practical side-by-side -side reference. This would make it easier to find the right film stock for your footage and understand its qualities. So to bring it all together, let's summarize which color grading system might be the best choice for you and your way of working. If you are someone who solely works within DaVinci Resolve, mainly color grades footage from a consistent, supported, single camera model, and is looking for absolute in-depth control and full transparency over every single aspect of your film emulation, then a node-based color grading system like CinePrint or Film Unlimited is probably the best choice for you. Whilst these systems might offer a more limited, curated selection of film stock emulations compared to Dehancer, their real strength is that they are fully customizable and adaptable to your exact liking using DaVinci Resolve's extensive set of native tools. You're able to access and modify every node that collectively creates their film look. However, if you are looking for an all-in-one plugin that offers a user-friendly workflow with familiar sliders and a clean layer, especially if you are coming from a photo editing background, if you value a growing and wide range of custom camera profiles that are tailored to individual camera models, if you prefer a simplified workflow that doesn't require you to understand complex node structures or node order, if you want in-depth and easy to adjust authentic and dynamic animated film effect tools, and if you need the flexibility to use the same learn to enhance workflow across a wide range of video editing programs, photo editing programs, and even on mobile iOS devices, then a plugin based color grading system like Dehancer is probably the best choice for you. Now, if you've already tried the free trial on the Dehancer website, and this review has genuinely helped you to decide that Dehancer is the right color grading system for you and your way of working, the team at Dehancer have generously provided a special discount code that you can use. The code Alejandro10 will allow you to get 10% off any Dehancer products, excluding the iOS app subscription. When you use this code, it also helps support the channel, which helps me to keep being able to make videos like this for you. So I really hope this review has been helpful for you in understanding the differences between these color grading systems and finding the best workflow for you. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one.